Alrighty, boys and girls, back into the Ruger, the 1022. Um, put it through the, the, the that there washing machine thing and, and got it cleaned up, and now it's just crazy full of oil, which is always fun. So, let's start putting it back together and see if I screwed anything up in the process. That would be, I mean, probably entertaining to y'all, but not not good for me but I mean it's 1022 so pretty hard to screw up anyways yeah um, I'm gonna start with the the trigger group that thing since that's kind of where we left off and some of these detents I think have let's see that's gonna be my extractor detent there's a spring in a springer one there and I don't know if that's the safety detent. No, it can't be. That's going to be the safety detent. I'm pretty sure that's the safety detent. So, take our little pliers here. I'm going to stick it down in the hole. Yeah, stick it in the hole. Look at that. Can you, can you see that? Here. Lighting. Better? See? Detent hole. And I'm going to take, like we did with the that, that, that uh, PC9, one of your like roll pin punches or something like that, that you can push the, keep the, the nose of the detent kind of on it, will help you push that detent down to get your, your safety itself back in there. Um, needs to go in this way so the red side should be on what would be the left side of the gun safe fire safe or excuse me fire safe fire safe yeah click it with this way um, and when you put it in what you want to do is if you see on this how there's that little beveled side and if you rotate that 180 you'll see that there's a slightly fatter side put that side down when you're trying to push in the detent because what it'll do it'll make it so once you get it in you can rotate it this way and then it'll just click into its detent if you go the other way and get it on this flat you're gonna have to find a way to get a small screwdriver in there push the detent in <clears throat> and either rotate it back this way or pull it out completely um, I've, I've done that on more than one occasion and it's a pain in the butt So pull my little punch out and pop it through, and then we're going to align it, and there we go. And now I'm going to grab it by both sides like that and just rotate it, and now there she is. That simple, man. That's the way I do it. Somebody else might have some kind of brilliant idea, but I, I don't care about other people. Like, not just in this case, like pretty much at all. Um trigger where's my trigger thingy trigger thingy um this is going to go in the gun like so lined up in that orientation there all right but you've got to put your little springy thingy back in there which is this guy and then we will drop that down in the gun trying to keep it all together um, the other thing so trigger return spring that needs to go in there let's see I'm still pretty well aligned and what you'll see is this shorter pin is the one that goes here and you can stick it in there and oh our spring came loose inside of the deal there so we're gonna have to adjust that a little bit put that there and then back 
This whole thing's being a pain in the ass. Let's see. Oh, fuck it. Having a shelf full of the right kind of tools helps a lot. Um, a lot of my day-to-day -day tools are kind of just cheap knockoff stuff. There's there's some pretty dedicated tooling that I have that's quite expensive. Um, but it's also one of those, you know, it's expensive because it's not used all that much. It's got kind of a specific job. There we go. All align that pins in there. Like these Wheeler screwdrivers, man. This is stuff that you can find at Cabela's. You probably buy them on Amazon or something. Um, these are kind of shop tools, so they're everybody has access to them. As to where my toolbox is full of nicer, larger sets of stuff. Um... Let's see. I'm hammer it to go in. Yeah, we need to put in the magazine catch. That's what we need to do. Get that to line up and stick her in there. Yeah. And let's see, put that in there. And then we're going to take one of the longer pins and we're going to start it on this side here. Because the other thing that this pin holds in is your bolt catch, which is this guy. And it's going to go in like this. The orientation you need to put it into the trigger group. And it will fall down in there. And then once you have that aligned, you can just finish pushing your pin through there. And your bolt should line up. There's another pin that's going to go in there. So keep that in mind. Now, let's see, with the hammer. So the hammer goes in, in this orientation, and you're going to want to take that spring there, where the little crook needs to be on the bottom side. And it helps if you kind of hold the trigger back while you're getting it in here, because it won't half up as much. And it goes underneath the leg of that uh, that bolt catch, kind of like so. And then we have a slightly larger pin that will go in there. Just like that. Now you can see that that, that bolt catch kind of rides up and over the top of that hammer and now we have our last little pin and all you have to do is on this spring um, is is push it down underneath there because you're going to take this pin and slide it over that spring and then you're going to take your ejector and set it in there and that pin goes to the ejector and then through the other part of your bolt catch so it captures that and this is just going to flop you around in here. Now your hammer, if you push that forward, you can take your, your hammer spring and strut assembly, whatever you want to call that, and just drop it in there so that it catches underneath that, cock it back. Um, you know, if you want, you can just test it just to make sure it all works. It works. Safety. Yep. So that's all there is for that uh, trigger group. Um, we did replace that missing buffer pin like I said you can get these on I mean you can order them from or whatever else but they make these in nylon and I think Delron and a hundred other types of things other than steel but I just you know four bucks for a pin whatever putting in your extractor spring and, and detent will go in here and all I'll, I'll do is I'll take the extractor on that that little leg right there and I'll just push straight back and down straight back and down come on now 
Of course, it's going to make me look like a fool on camera. So I'm going to get my little pick here and pull that detent back a little bit. Uh, or my screwdriver, maybe? Something. Okay. As I was saying, you take the thingy, you push the thingy in, and thingy drops down in its groove. Like that. And extractors back in. We're good there. So now I have to put that back in this. Take your charging handle, rotate it in, put the little nubby in the little hole, nubby hole. And then this is going to come back and sit here. And then you have to compress this little bastard down up underneath the bolt. Like so. And then... Like so. And then let the bolt drop down on it. And once it's seated, it's going to want to spring forward. So hold that charging handle and you should be good to go. It's, it takes a little to get used to. Buffer pin back in there like so. your ejector stays there we'll put that in line that up drop your trigger group pins in these are pretty tight because it's the first time they've been out persuasion that happens you have to do that every every so often set that aside now just the reversey of what we did with this guy here you're gonna take that and slider in there you're spring it stick it all in the hole push your detent down in there and that's it the only thing left here is to put this on. This was on there loose, and I think it's because this guy runs a suppressor on this, so I'm just going to snap her on there a little bit taut. Like, yeah, yeah, good enough. And we're going to screw this little guy back on, like so. Tighten her up. Just good and snug, not like crazy tight. It doesn't have to be. Set that over here. And we're gonna have to kind of put the oh, fucking pin walking out there. What the shit? Ah, god damn it. Oh, there it goes. Woo! The stock is what really holds all these pins in, so they're not super tight. But you're gonna have to put your safety kind of that 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 halfway spot like last time to get this to kind of rock into position and once it's in you can you can put it back on the safe or whatever let's see start the screw in screw in a little snug lock your bolt to the rear thumb put the thing in the hole twist there you go. That's it. That is it. Safety. Bangy. Safety again. Yeah. There she is. One. Ruger 1022. This particular is the takedown model. Um, but it's all pretty much the same, man. There's no 
significant difference between a takedown and non-takedown, one that was built in 1968 and one that was built yesterday. Um, finish differences, stock differences, thing like that, but they're all pretty much the exact same gun. Uh, to my knowledge, the parts are all interchangeable. So... I mean, that detail just seems like it's really... So, anywho, yeah, give me a like, share, subscribe, you know, the whole thumbs up thingy. And, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm always open to suggestions, so if you guys are hunting for something that you've never seen before or whatever else, I mean, I need to start making a little, a little list um, of, of guns that need to go out there. I try to find the more common stuff. Um, I thoroughly enjoy the more rare stuff that comes in, like those Matabas and the Spazas and shit like that that I get occasionally. Um, I got a few customers that let me play with some of their rare stuff that uh, I kind of enjoyed doing. Um, I've got one. I'm debating whether or not I'm going to try and do a video on it. That uh, It's pretty rare, and there's not a lot of information on it out there. And, and having been in and out of it a couple of times now, I know kind of what's going on. So, Anyways, yeah. Take care, guys.